the modern stock split isn't what it used to be. It's no longer just about trading mechanic. It's evolved. It's now this powerful, what the research calls a dual purpose attention catalyst. A dual purpose catalyst, meaning it's designed to attract not just investors, but, and this is the key part, customers as well. Yeah, and to really get it, we have to go back to the beginning. We need to understand the old world, the traditional reasons for splitting a stock. Okay, let's do that. So before this practice nearly died out, what was the standard rationale? Why would a company do this 25, 30 years ago? Well, there were two big ideas. The first and most common one was something called the trading range or the anchoring hypothesis. Anchoring, so like a psychological thing. Exactly. The thinking was that there's a sort of comfortable price range for a stock, maybe between $20 and $100. If it got much higher than that, it just felt too expensive for the average retail investor. Even if they could afford it, the sticker price was off-putting. Right. It was basically a marketing move to keep the price looking attractive. The second idea was what's called the informational signaling hypothesis. Okay. Signaling what? Confidence. Splitting a stock isn't free. It's a hassle. So when management announced a split, they were essentially telling the market, we are so confident in our future growth that this stock is going to be right back up at $1,000 soon, so we're splitting it now. And there's data to back that up, right, that it was a positive signal. Oh, absolutely. Studies found that, historically, split stocks tended to outperform the market by about 8% or even more in the year after the split. So it was a credible, costly signal of financial health. But then the world changed. Our source material points to a couple of huge shifts that really just eroded those reasons. The first one was the rise of institutional ownership. You know, huge mutual funds, pension funds, hedge funds, they started to dominate trading. And they don't care if a stock is $50 or $5,000. Not at all. They're trading in massive blocks and have the capital. The psychological appeal to the little guy just mattered less and less. And the second shift, which is more on the technical side, was decimalization. Right. A huge one. In 2001, U.S. markets switched from pricing stocks in fractions like eighths and sixteenths to decimals. Which made the bid-ask spread the gap between the buying and selling price much, much smaller. Exactly. And that basically wiped out one of the main microstructure benefits of splitting. There was just less of a financial incentive to do it. So splits declined, they nearly vanished, but then the environment changed again. And this is where we get to the turning point, 2008. The period right after the financial crisis completely transformed retail investing. This was the birth of the attention economy, but applied directly to the stock market. You've got the rise of commission-free trading. Mobile apps like Robinhood become ubiquitous. And then there's the explosion of financial talk on social media, Reddit, X, everywhere. All the friction to trading just disappeared. And suddenly, mm -hmm. the most valuable currency wasn't commissions. It was attention. 